Washington Commanders have released quarterback Carson Wentz after one season with the franchise. They were hoping to find their franchise QB, but a finger injury and diminished playing. Washington will save $26.17 million. We have some breaking news, and honestly, this could be the culmination of one of the most promising careers in the NFL. This never panned out. And when you really put things in perspective, when you just look at this man's like last three years, a player that was considered to be in the MVP conversation for future seasons to come might be out of the NFL now. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We have a lot of content coming out for you guys this week getting you ready for the free agency period so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any uploads and now that we get all that out of the way work So many of my subscribers listened to me and made bank on the Super Bowl, bro. You remember when I told you to sign up with my promo code microphone to get a $100 deposit match? And then said this? And if Kenneth Gainwell gets more than 21.5 rush yards, you could 3X your money. Now, if you feel really good about this, you could also add Travis Kelsey scoring one touchdown. And if both of these hit, you 5X your money. Well, a lot of you guys slid into my DMs on Instagram to show me how much money you made because of this hit. So a huge shout out to all of you, man. I only have my promo code live for two more weeks. So I'm still gonna be posting my picks onto my Instagram account at the flight Mike. And we're definitely gonna make some picks for the XFL and the USFL. And I post NBA picks onto my Instagram story on a daily basis. So make sure you sign up with my promo code microphone to get a hundred dollar deposit match while it's still active. And thank you, prize picks, for making us all a bunch of money on Super Bowl Sunday. Mike check one, two, one, two. Two. What's going on, everybody? The acquisition of Carson Wentz from the Indianapolis Colts in the very beginning was perceived as a controversial one. Not because he's trending downward as a quarterback and as a player, but because this was a decision that Dan Snyder made for the Washington Commanders that, for the most part, everyone else in the Washington Commanders front office didn't necessarily agree with. And it's not really hard to see why. His body of work hasn't looked so promising recently. I mean, sure, if you type in Carson Wentz on Pro Football Reference and you go ahead and take a look at his basic statistics from his time with the Indianapolis Colts, you would think, oh my God, Mike. This is a man that threw for 27 touchdowns and seven interceptions, threw for over 3,500 passing yards, 62% completion percentage. Why the hell is he being passed around the NFL like he's Larsa Pippen? <laughs> Well, the reason being that Carson Wentz is very, very prone to playing hero ball and not necessarily making the correct read when it's necessary. When you combine that with the fact that he's now 31 years old, it's clear that this is the player that he is. There's not necessarily any development from this point. This is who he is. I know it seems just like yesterday when Jared Goff went number one overall, Carson Wentz went number two. You had Ezekiel Elliott going at number four. You had Jalen Ramsey in that draft as well. Yeah, all these players have peaked already and the future for these players isn't necessarily guaranteed at this point, except for Jared Goff, but Jared Goff is consistently being brought up as a bridge quarterback. Regardless, I initially thought that the Washington Commanders trading for Carson Wentz in the very beginning was a horrific mistake, especially when you had Deshaun Watson available before Deshaun Watson got the crazy price tag that he did. I was disappointed that the Commanders didn't pursue Deshaun Watson because a couple days before the Watson decision was made, the Washington Commanders struck a trade where they would send a 2020 22 second round pick and a 2022 third round pick and a 2023 third round pick in return for Carson Wentz and a second round pick. So ultimately, this was seen as a move that didn't really have tremendous aspirations. It's not necessarily like you're reaching for the stars with this one. It's just a player that had a lot of potential that has been falling off over the past three seasons and seems like from his original team where Doug Peterson and him had a falling out throughout the season a couple of years ago, which resulted in Wentz getting traded to the Colts where he teamed up with Frank Reich where they actually believed that Carson Wentz was going to be their future for a couple of seasons and again Frank Reich was credited as the man that made Carson Wentz successful to begin with and bear in mind Chris Ballard even said point blank that the original plan was to trade for Carson Wentz from the Philadelphia Eagles who by the way Carson Wentz the season that the Eagles won their last Super Bowl was having an MVP caliber season some people credited Doug Peterson some people credited Frank Reich 
right. Clearly later on, when Carson Wentz didn't have as much success with Doug Peterson minus Frank Reich, people credited Frank Reich. So the Philadelphia Eagles traded Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts where Frank Reich was the coach. This was seen as a home run. I mean, it made a lot of sense too on paper. I mean, if you don't believe me, listen to how Chris Ballard talks about the decision. It seems like it was a very difficult situation stomaching the fact that that didn't work out. It missed opportunities with Carson. We were getting a young enough player that we could have a guy that could be here for the long term for at least a five, six, seven year run. We, you know, and we weren't right on that decision and giving up the assets at the time cost us from being able to get one in 21, which I don't really, you know, looking back, I don't really know if we'd have had an opportunity in the draft, but, and then not having a first round pick last year restricted that. I've thought a lot about that. Look, at the end of the day, we made the decisions we did. We had a process to make them. We're at, we're at where we're at. Once that didn't work and he got traded to the commanders, it seemed like the writing was on the wall, especially when you figure out why he got traded to the commanders. And throughout the season, you heard storylines like this. Towards the end of the season, the commanders just randomly decided that Carson Wentz should be their starter against the Cleveland Browns. Ron Rivera informed the quarterbacks of this move. It was very shocking. The commanders in a team meeting, but beforehand, Coach Rivera talked to the quarterbacks and informed them of the situation. Taylor Heineke went to the bench with Carson Wentz, the original starter, taking over. Okay, I mean, this is kind of a boomer bust. This is seen as a very famous game in the Washington Commanders season. You saw a bunch of posts like this at the time hyping up Carson Wentz. And then you remember that when you compare Taylor Heineke at that moment in the season, he had 12 touchdowns, six interceptions, 62% completion percentage, won five games, tied one game, lost three games. Then you compare that to Wentz, who won two games, lost four games, completed 63% of his passes through 11 touchdowns to six interceptions. There wasn't much logic here at that point. The team was really rolling whenever it came to Taylor Heineke. And you saw a bunch of graphics like this, for instance. Heineke, much better win percentage, much better offensive points per game, much better yards per game, much better drive score percentage. He just seemed more in sync with Terry McLaurin, if I'm being honest. Well, Wentz ended up playing and this was the result. This embodies Carson Wentz's issues right here. He has a wide open receiver to the left over here, right? Now, where do you think Carson Wentz ended up throwing this football to? Well, let's watch. Carson Wentz unwinds, throws it into double coverage. Jahan Dotson doesn't have a chance to make a play at the ball and it gets intercepted. It was so bad that Commanders fans were chanting for Taylor Heineke at this point. Listen. <laughs> I wouldn't be Wentz's only interception, by the way. I would tweet at the time, this interception that was made in the beginning of the second quarter. I wouldn't be the only one either. He started the game off with this interception. It was just a horrible game all around. And the cherry on top at this point was this beautiful Ron Rivera interview where he seemed oblivious to the fact that the Washington Commander's season was on the line. To clarify, you said you would talk about quarterback next week. If you guys are eliminated today by what happens at four o'clock, is Sam Howell in consideration? We can be eliminated. Yeah, if the Packers beat the Vikings, oh, then you guys are eliminated. In Carson Wentz's defense, I think it would have been very difficult to succeed in that situation to begin with, primarily because he was injured in the beginning of the season, right when he had the opportunity to potentially establish chemistry with brand new teammates. And by the time he came back, he was kind of thrown into the fire. The main reason why this could be the end of Carson Wentz is I believe his opportunity with the Indianapolis Colts was his number one opportunity to establish himself as a franchise quarterback for a different team. Now, I don't necessarily know what his future is going to look like because it seems like the Washington Commanders are done with Carson Wentz as well. As a matter of fact, according to Adam Schefter, the Washington Commanders have released quarterback Carson Wentz. This was obvious. I mean, clearly every single time you heard about Eric Bieniemy becoming the brand new offensive coordinator, he was expected to work with Sam Howell. That's what makes sense at this point. But at this point, man, I don't necessarily know what the future is going to look like Carson Wentz. By the way, the commanders didn't just release Carson Wentz. They also released cornerback slash safety Bobby McCain. This is because they had young talent in the secondary. He was the odd man out. And as a result, the commanders will save 4.42 million against the cap. At this point, it was really about a question of what do you expect at this point? Carson Wentz is 30 and it's in the commander's best interest to figure out what they have in Sam Howell. And it seems like they're very invested in this venture as well. You have Eric Bianami 
somebody who's expected to get the most he possibly can out of this rookie QB. And this move in of itself will save the commanders 26.17 million against their salary cap. The question is, what is Carson Wentz's future gonna look like at this point? I mean, you went to the team that had the head coach that was credited for your success. The fact that that didn't work out, you can make an argument that since Carson Wentz didn't work out, Frank Reich eventually fizzled out with the Indianapolis Colts. Now, could we see a world where Frank Reich brings Carson Wentz to the Carolina Panthers to work with him again? I don't necessarily think so. I mean, if you listen to Frank Reich's language when Carson Wentz was leaving, it seems like he's officially out on Carson Wentz. I mean, as a matter of fact, he even apologized to Jim Ursay for the Carson Wentz trade not working out. Frank Reich even said that he told reporters at this year's NFL scouting combine that he stuck his neck out for Carson Wentz. And in light of recent events, one wonders whether he made that comment with a tinge of regret. I mean, going back to this athletic article about Carson Wentz's tenure with the Colts and why they moved on from him, there's kind of a mysticism behind it. I mean, take a look at this. As for the Colts, the issues with Wentz stretched back to before the season began, one source said, and over the course of the year, some grew frustrated at what they deemed a lack of leadership, a resistance to hard coaching, and a reckless style of play, which had a role in several close losses that year. But this wasn't just a football move. Wentz's play, inconsistent as it was to close the year, wasn't the deciding factor. Colts brass simply didn't trust him to be the franchise quarterback moving forward, and they weren't willing to bring him back in 2022 and hope for better. Thus, the decision was made swiftly after the week 18 debacle in Jacksonville, Wentz wouldn't return for a second season in Indianapolis. What was missing, some within the team believe, was the type of direction that the Colts got from the quarterback position in recent years, namely with Andrew Luck, Phillip Rivers, and even Jacoby Brissett, who despite struggling late in the 2019 season, remained a deeply respected voice within the locker room. So this pretty much means that the Colts didn't see Carson Wentz as a worthy franchise QB. He was not a good fit, not only because of how inconsistent he was on the field, but he was a horrible leader off the field. And this is something we've heard even during his time with the Philadelphia Eagles as well. At the end of the day, the future of Carson Wentz just looks so uncertain. I mean, I don't necessarily know what role he'd play in at this point. Would he be a backup quarterback? Would he be content being a backup quarterback? Or do you think another team might give him an opportunity? Maybe a team that is clearly trying to tank for the 2024 NFL draft or a team that didn't end up getting the quarterback that they wanted. At this point, Carson Wentz's best years are behind him. But I have to admit, I can't help but wonder what if. What if he didn't get injured? Was it the injuries that caught up with him? Was it the fact that the Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts and maybe that affected his confidence? Could it be that his affected confidence was the reason why he wasn't enough of a leader with the Indianapolis Colts that got him traded to the Washington football team? And when he got traded to the Washington football team at that point, was he a shell of his former self, both mentally and physically? Did he just believe that he didn't have good football left in him? Does he still believe that he doesn't have good football left in him? That's a question that only Carson Wentz could answer. I don't necessarily know what the future is going to look like for him, but I will keep you guys updated when we find out. Let me know in the comment section down below. How do you feel about Carson Wentz's career? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.